So I recently became an uncle and seeing my nieces and nephews crawl gave me the crazy idea of making a crawling robot that learns how to walk. By the time I got this idea, my nieces and nephews were five months old. So I need to start building this robot as soon as possible because my plan was to have the robot eventually race my nieces and nephews. I kept the robot as simple as possible using some hobby servos, a 3D printer, and an Arduino. First, I wanted to make sure I could get the robot walking manually in simulation as a proof of concept. For my simulation environment, I whipped up some Pi Bullet because it was crazy easy to install, but there are other simulation environments. It took a bit to manually create the robot crawling gate, and I went through several iterations of some walking gates, some better than others. I ended up doing a simple ellipsoid trajectory for the gate where the foot was on the ground for like 30% of the time and for like 70% of the time the foot was swinging forward. So I was pretty happy all in all with this gate and I put it on the real robot and it, it worked well. But now it was time to see what AI or more specifically reinforcement learning can do. Let me say I have seen robotics and AI researchers make anything walk with reinforcement learning from humanoids like Look at this guy chasing the ball. I don't know what this cursed two-legged hopper is, but it's walking too. I've seen other things like a spider and even this one-legged hopper walking. I even saw one paper where a researcher made a chair walk. So my little robot has to be easy, right? So now it's time to learn and the robot did some learning and I definitely learned a lot through this whole process. The magic sauce algorithm I was using is proximal policy optimization try saying that five times fast, referred to more commonly as PPO. And it really has become one of the best default learning algorithms in research. The algorithm's main advantage is its simplicity, stability, and sample efficiency. To explain how it works, I have an agent, which is the robot in this case. I track the robot state, which is the robot's orientation and limb positions. And I have a reward, such as rewarding the robot for having a higher velocity. Then the algorithm magics update the robot actions with what it thinks the robot should do next to increase the reward. So let's get to training. My plan is to reward the robot for how fast it is walking. First, I load the robot in way too high and the robot was having trouble getting its footing and the robot fell fairly quickly. So I lowered the robot. The robot got into a few steps, but it wasn't making the gains I hope it would. Then I realized I made a big error in how I initially started the robot position. And this is an important point. So if you don't know, PPO is a reinforcement learning base on gradient descent. What that means is that PPO takes a small policy update. But what happens if you initialize in a bad state and the step isn't big enough for you to get out of that state, then you're stuck. So if a robot is in a bad state, might get stuck in a local minimum state instead of finding the best walking state. And it's fairly easy to get into bad states based on how you initialize the robot. So then I initialized the robot with bent legs in a position I thought was more desirable. So after several hours of learning, I got a really cool hopping gate. I was super happy with this gate. But then I realized my next mistake was there was no way this high energy gate was going to work with my cheap hobby servos. So then I looked at some baby footages and realized I probably could get away with not even having the back legs move, keeping them flat or bent and just moving the front limbs like a baby first learning how to crawl. With all this setup, I got some um, interesting results, like really chaotic jumping motion that was honestly impressive and creepy. As I stated before, I was only rewarding the robot for having a high velocity. So the robot didn't care about moving in a straight line but moving the limbs in whatever way to go as fast as possible. So I changed that reward to not be about velocity, but instead about having the robot move forward. After some weird leg behaviors, robot doing some exciting barrel rolls, the robot spinning in circles, and even finding the end of the world, falling to its demise, the gate the RL policy landed on was a quicker, shorter oscillations where the robot legs don't swing for as much but I finally got something working and could get back to racing my nieces and nephews. All right, let's get out of simulation land and back into the real world. You can see the difference between the RL gate here and the gate I made. The learn robot walks at a nice rate of about five centimeters a second. And to make the robot blend in with the babies and 
uh, to look as creepy as possible. I gave it a nice baby doll head that really gave it that uncanny and creepy look that I wanted. I thought this robot would be good against the babies, but I forgot one thing. I forgot to account for how fast the babies grow. When I started, the babies were like five months and barely crawling. And by the time I finished, the babies were 11 months and a lot faster than when I started. So here's some footage of the babies and the robot side by side. And the babies were much, much faster. But my nieces and nephews did have fun playing with the creep robot. And that's what really matters in the end. So in this battle of robots versus humans, humans win again. Hopefully next time when I do a walking robot, the kids won't be running by then. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more robots. I'll post the code and hardware below and I'll probably put a more technical breakdown on Patreon. Thank you.